So guys, Tezza has finally kicked off something we've been waiting for months for. They've confirmed that development for Hardware 3 vehicles are continuing to progress and that major updates are now on the way. But more importantly, we have just spotted our very first official signs that it's actually happening in the latest software updates and Tezza could just flip the switch and make it available as a plug and play retrofit. Over the past weeks, Tezza began rolling it out as the latest branch of full self-driving version 14.2.1 which introduces several new capabilities such as different park modes and driving options. Drivers can now select exactly where FSD supervised should park at the end of each trip, in a parking lot, at the curbside, or directly in front of a driveway. Driver profiles have also been significantly improved, offering granular customizations with mode presets ranging from sloth mode, prioritizing maximum caution, to Mad Max mode, prioritizing fastest possible travel time. Overall, V14 delivers a noticeably more confident and polished driving experience with major improvements in smoothness, reaction time, decision-making behaviors, even in complex intersections and multi-lane environments. What's also interesting is that Tezza reiterated during their Q3 earnings call that they have not abandoned hardware 3 owners and that a V14 Lite will be in development and coming to older vehicles. The CFO emphasizes that Tesla's main focus remains on reaching full autonomy and they will shift resources towards maintaining the rest of the fleet afterwards and direction is already starting to come together with the latest 2025.44 software update including codes that previews internal service grade toolbox now exposes publicly rather than locked behind Tezza's own service centers. This specific toolbox contains configurations for full self-driving computer upgrades, strongly hinting that Tezza is now preparing the back-end pathway for potential hardware 3 to hardware 4 retrofit options. And the fact that this interface is visible to third-party repair shops suggests that Tezza could enable a plug-and-play retrofit experience where installing a new board and flipping a configuration toggle in the UI is enough to activate the new hardware. Now even though this development is extremely promising, there is no confirmed timing for when retrofit hardware becomes available, with the earliest realistic expectation being 2026 to 2027. In the meantime, FSD V14 Lite remains Tezza's short-term plans for hardware 3 vehicles, mirroring the earlier V13 Lite approach that delivers select features to existing Hardware 3 stack. The goal is to deliver as much of the new FSD experience as possible without overloading the compute limitations of Hardware 3. V14 Lite is currently expected to arrive sometime in Q2 of 2026, giving a target window between March and June roughly five to eight months from today. All right, so the biggest takeaway so far is that V14 isn't just another software update. It's part of Tesla's setting the stage where all vehicles will be part of the RoboTaxi network. Of course, V14 makes driving so much smoother, so much smarter overall, but what makes it so special unlike any previous builds is that Tesla is also laying the infrastructure and retrofit hardware licensing, and eventually a wide-scale autonomous network. Every change that we're seeing here is a collective of everything they prepared to do to make every car in their fleet fully compatible with the unsupervised full self-driving. And from the looks of it, it won't be long until the roads are packed full of self-driving vehicles, hardware 3, hardware 4, and even hardware 5. Now, in other news, hidden codes in the latest 2025.44 software update shows that Tezza may be preparing for an unsupervised full self-driving rollout sooner than expected. Multiple geofence regions have been identified in the codes with the largest labeled Bay Supervised CA DMV. Smaller geofence zones include Tezza's engineering HQ parking lots and surrounding regions covering Palo Alto, San Francisco and nearby areas. The design implies that Tezza owners are entering a supported zone will gain the option to switch into fully autonomous mode rather than the supervised system currently used in 14.2.1. This geofence expansion approach may become Tesla's strategy starting with city level test zones then gradually merging into larger regions. Additional research into this build by Green the Only 
shows Tesla has begun removing the beta label from auto steer, indicating the system is now considered stable enough to become a full-on feature rather than an experimental one. Tesla still hasn't confirmed the official transition into the single unified software stack combining autopilot and full self-driving, but since evidence strongly suggests that the direction is headed that way, it won't be much longer until it arrives. Tesla is also preparing a more intelligent driver monitoring system, likely enabling text and drive style functionality, depending on how confident the system is in real time. Three severities of driving attention negs have also been found in the latest codes, suggesting dynamic thresholds based on conditions and system confidence. In high confidence, the driver may be allowed to take their eyes off of the road for extended periods of time, but as confidence decreases, the system will demand more attention using three sets of symbol to let drivers know where its confidence level is at. Then also, a newly discovered warning message has been found in the codes, which specifically states approaching a country border, full self-driving features may become unavailable. This likely is the foundation for regional compliance, ensuring Tesla can activate full self-driving in certain European countries such as the Netherlands by next year, while automatically disabling the system when crossing into restricted countries. Tesla already uses this method to handle crossing between US and Mexico borders, and applying the same logic to Europe would let Tesla deploy full self-driving region by region rather than waiting for EU-wide approval. So there we have it guys. This update really feels like one of those turning points where you can actually tell Tesla has a bigger plan in motion. V14 itself is great. Smoother driving, smarter decision making, a lot more confidence. But what makes it stand out even more is everything that's surrounding it. The toolbox that's being opened up, the hardware mapping, the first signs of unsupervised zone, it almost feels like Tesla is finally laying the bricks to everything that's coming next year. And honestly, whether you're on hardware 4 or still on hardware 3, it's starting to feel like you're not being left behind anymore. Hardware 4 owners get the full experience now, but the light path for hardware 3 future retrofits options tells me that Tesla actually does intend to pull everyone forward even if it takes a little bit longer. So yeah, still lots of known timing, availability, how the rollout will eventually look like, but the direction feels a lot more clear than ever. If the next few months goes the way that the software hints they will go, 2026 might be the year where full self-driving really shifts its way from testing onto something that owners can rely on day to day, but we'll have to really wait and see how this latter end of the year really ends up looking, but I'm very, very confident that we are going to see fully unsupervised be released in certain parts of the US, as well as the RoboTaxi network, the RoboTaxis themselves no longer requiring a monitor. So yeah, this is pretty much it for this video. I am so glad to be back after this mini vacation. Can't wait to keep you guys as posted as possible on everything that comes up. Really appreciate you guys sticking around. And if you do like the content, make sure you hit the subscribe and that bell notification if you haven't already done so. And follow me on X on Twitter if you haven't already done so. You'll see things over there that you wouldn't see over here. And you can chat with me anytime and I'll respond as quickly as possible. Anyways, this is John once again. Peace out.